NBA game of the night last night was a good one. James Harden of the Nets, Kawhi Leonard, and the Clippers. No KD for the fourth straight game. Fourth quarter, Clippers down 11, but they're not giving up. Paul George for three. Yes, eight-point game. Steve Ballmer, oh, he loves it. Under seven to go now. Nets up six. James Harden, you can't give him any room. I mean none. 37 for Harden plus 11 boards. Nets up nine. Four minutes to go. Seven-point game. George again he had 34 but didn't play the final minutes because of a minutes restriction so with one minute to go Clippers are down five and it's Lou Williams in the corner for three yes it's a two point game Kawhi would tie it with a couple of free throws we got 15 seconds to go Kyrie Irving he would score 28 can't get that one to go oh but DeAndre Jordan is there for the tip it's up it's good it's a two point lead for Brooklyn 11 seconds to go Kawhi to the basket up and good but hold everything it's an offensive foul Take another look. Kawhi pushing off on James Harden. He wants a challenge, but they don't have one remaining. And so the Nets hang on to win it 112-108. And so, look, the Nets, when they play good teams, they've been great. After they win last night, they're 12-4 and four against teams 500 or better. That is the best such winning percentage in the NBA. And let me bring Jay Williams into the conversation now. Jay Will, you know him, KJZ, obviously every weekday morning on ESPN Radio. Jumps over for a minute. All right, let's start with that one. Uh, Jay, uh, K Jay Will, good call, bad call on Harden at the end there. Horrible call. James Harden had just bullied Kawhi Leonard the last possession going down. That was a horrible call. Should have been a no call at all throughout the course of the game, Greeny. So, so if they had a challenge at the end there, you think it would have been overturned? Yes, I do. They lost their challenge, though, due to uh, they actually challenged something else throughout the course of the game, so they lost it. But th those are one of the things that you wish you had something in your back pocket to challenge a call like that. I, I didn't see the arm of Kawhi Leonard extend all the way to a really big push-off. If the game's physical, like the way it's been called the whole game, like last night, let them play through that. I'm with you. It's a bad call. All right, let me jump to some other things that happened this weekend. I'm sure a lot of people watched Joel Embiid Friday night score 50 points in a game against the Bulls. He's right now the second leading scorer in the league, and he's averaging 11 rebounds. Is he the MVP of the NBA? I think right now he's still 1B. It's still LeBron James for me. I think this is a stretch coming up for LeBron James in which it can make or break his MVP run, right? Because if you're playing after having 71 days off, after winning the championship at 36 years old, he hasn't low managed at all, Greeny, at all. If he plays well during this stretch without Anthony Davis and keeps him above 500 during this stretch without AD, like, and he plays, he's averaging 30 points a night and he's playing at a high level, I think LeBron James has a chance to kind of run away with this award but Joel Embiid the 50 point game 17 rebounds I mean he, he played out of his mind against the Bulls and they're they're the best team in the East uh, right record wise right now I, I still think that the Nets are the best team in the East but Joel Embiid is playing high but he's still 1B as opposed to LeBron James being 1A for me I'm with you and if they don't load manage LeBron and he refuses to do it all year I'll vote for him even if I think that Joel Embiid should be the MVP because I hate exactly. the load management that much okay one more thing for you Anthony Edwards, Friday night. I mean, this was the dunk of the year by far. So let's juxtapose it. Oh, as he throws it down with some of the other great dunks. Jay Will, give me your thoughts. Well, look, obviously, I think a great dunk screen. I go to Vince Carter over Frederick Weiss in the 2000 Olympics. I, I'm seeing Vince Carter jump over a person who was seven feet tall was stupid. And then another one, Greeny, March 11th, 2013. I'm sitting courtside at the Clipper game with my boy Scooter, and I watch it happen. I watch Brandon Knight literally have chalk outlined around his body by DeAndre Jordan. I've never seen it. I know DeAndre Jordan is crazy, <laughs> athletic, greeny, but just the fact, like, as a small guy, the wrong place, the wrong time, sometimes in the course of a game, you see the ball and you just react. And poor B, B Knight just reacted. He just reacted, and his face was around areas on DeAndre Jordan's body that no man's face should ever be around a human being in his life. I feel bad. I, I, it was a 187 that happened on that day for Brandon Knight. It was not a good day. I remember waking up the following morning and hashtag RIP Brandon Knight was trending and my first uh. thought was oh no something tragic has happened and I suppose from a basketball standpoint that's exactly right. How good was this dunk though Friday night? How good is this dunk by Anthony Edwards in game? It's the dunk of the year. It's special. Here's a crazy thing, Greeny. The stat line, though, when you dig deeper, I mean, it was 0 7 from the three-point line, 3 of 14 from the field for only seven points. So we take away the dunk, uh, but 
it wasn't a great night for Anthony Edwards. I didn't want to steal his thunder. He played well, but social media, you know the things we love, and I give him credit for the dunk. It went crazy again. Jay Will, he's the J in KJZ. Back to ESPN Radio, coast to coast every day. Good to see you. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.